Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again bringing you another lore video for the game For Honor. And today we're going to be focusing on the Viking faction and specifically we are going to have a look at the hero simply known as the Warlord. And this is going to be a general overview and it's going to answer this question hopefully of who and what are these Warlords. So let's get started. Now let's first start off with a quote, and this quote comes from a regular Viking villager trying to explain a warlord. So quote, there are traditions among our people that run deep as stone. Their shields are as versatile as they are strong. Their swords are lethal, simple, an ancient design. And a leader who does not lead the charge is no leader at all. They are called warlords, a name that is earned, another ancient tradition. To become a warlord means service to all who need it for life. They are the shield of our people, and they will not fall." End quote. And this Viking tried to explain what a warlord is among their people. Now, if I could sum up a warlord in just a few sentences, I could say something like this. Basically, warlords are not born into leadership. They've had to earn it through blood, sweat, and steel. To be a warlord means a life of service to their people. Their shield protects those who cannot fight. Their sword will cut down those who would attempt to cause their people harm. Their fighting style is simple yet brutal. You will always find them leading the charge. And to be a warlord, you have to truly love the people that you serve. And that pretty much explains in a few sentences what a warlord is. Now let's just delve a little bit deeper into warlords. Now, what we know so far about warlords is that we know that the role of warlord is a very old and it's very ancient among the Vikings. They are strong, they are leaders, and someone who doesn't lead a charge does not deserve to be a leader. So that's one thing we know about the warlords. We also recognize that their shields have versatile use. Their blade is simple yet effective and equally ancient design. They are considered the shield of their people and fight for anyone among them who needs them. Now here's the interesting question. The question is, what can we make from this? I found it very curious that the warlord makes use of what the warlord refers to as an ancient designed blade. Now, for all intents and purposes, this blade appears to be a Roman Empire designed sword simply called a gladius. Now, this would suggest that the Vikings in this world have had interactions with the Romans to the point where they can create a gladius blade. Now, when you take this gladius blade that the warlords create and you compare it to the centurion's preferred weapon it is without doubt strikingly similar but here's the question is it actually a gladius blade that the warlord uses now originally the design of this gladius viking type blade goes back to the designs of the Spatha, which is another Roman blade very similar to the Gladius. That is what most likely refers to the ancient design, and perhaps this could extend even further if we look into the Warlord's role. Now one thing that we definitely know about the role is that Warlords are leaders and protectors of their people and they will fight at the forefront no matter what. They also show great leadership via strength through their actions. We also know they truly love their people and will gladly risk death 
to protect those they cherish. And that is what I believe the role of the warlord is. Now, although there is very little to really base this on, but a warlord does have some similar leadership qualities as the centurion who was also a leader or more correctly an officer of Roman soldiers, the legionnaires. You see, centurions often had very close bonds to their soldiers built on absolute trust because that was what kept them alive when they were fighting in formation and had to obey their commander's orders to the point without questioning them. Failing would also bring great shame on any military leader to the point where his career and personal reputation could be tarnished forever. Now, why did I mention this about the centurions? I did because the warlords, which are also leaders, are likely in a similar situation. By fighting at the forefront with their shield and sword, they create as well a very strong bond with the warriors he leads and in effect makes for a better fighting force that trusts each other and do not question their leader when engaged in combat. Failure could result in loss of the mission or worse, the loss of those that they cherish. Now, we also have to take into consideration that this version of Earth is a different one than our own. So, who is to say that they, a warlord and a centurion, don't actually share the same roots? You see, post-cataclysm, this entire Earth has changed, outright changed. And we do not know to what extent it has. Apparently, knowledge, technology, culture, everything was ruptured or outright destroyed. Only bits and pieces remain. Not even the Vikings are sure where they got all their technology and their culture and their traditions from. Now, because of this cataclysm and the loss of knowledge, culture, and traditions, perhaps a theory such as this could work. I believe maybe before the catastrophe, the Vikings managed to raid an area under the rule of the Roman Empire. Perhaps the Vikings looted and took ideas, technologies, and implemented them to further their own survival. Perhaps the warlord at that time saw how useful a gladius blade could be as a weapon from battle and made good use of it and the construction process has been therefore passed down over generations as an ancient design. That could work here. Now let's have a look at armor that the warlord wears. Now when we compare what the warlord wears as armor to a viking raider the warlord wears an awful lot of armor specifically since the warlord has such a large and heavy frame he would be able to wear it quite well and still be nimble in combat because he does prefer to have some definite protection around his body now the warlord primarily wears thick leather armor and hardy animal pelts over chainmail or his entire body. Now a warlord's helmet is made of iron and is in the shape of a rounded or peaked cap made from four plates and has leather drapes protecting the neck area. This helmet has a rounded cap and has a spectacle guard around the eyes and nose which forms a sort of mask and that pretty much there is what the warlord wears as standard armor. Now let's have a look at the warlord's preferred weapons. Now we already know from previously that the warlord prefers to make use of a gladius and a shield. Now it's, the argument is that the gladius may be a different form of gladius such as a Spartha, but we're not sure about that. Anyways, the gladius 
is paired with a sturdy shield. This allows the wielder to deflect blows and get close enough to the target to unleash deadly close range attacks with the gladius. Now the shield tends to be round and made of reinforced wood. The shield is well balanced and this gives the ability of the warlord to conduct combat with the shield as well by bashing or striking with the shield in close combat as well. Okay, everybody, well, there you have it. That is my basic overview of the Warlord in the For Honor world. Now, the Warlord is one of the Viking characters that I have not had a whole lot of experience with, and I certainly would like to play the uh, Warlord a lot more, perhaps in arcade or something, just to get more used to it. Now, I'm not a very good player whatsoever in the game For Honor because I just don't have the time to play it. And it's a game that's quite difficult and does take commitment to learn. But my golly, it's a great game, I have to say. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this lore, please give me a like. And, of course, be wonderful if you could subscribe for future lore or Let's Plays on my channel. Other than that, this is Spotted Gecko Gamer. Till next time.